Welcome back to The Bank Guide. I'm your bank guy, Colin. And today is another video in the five minute logic expert series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing, and mastering in logic in 30 days. And today we're taking a look at logic stock vintage EQs. These are kind of like analog style EQs that are emulating hardware models that exist in the real world that add a nice little analog saturation into your mix. It's really, really a cool tool that can be fun to mix with and can get you some tones that you might not be able to get with just a stock standard EQ. Now that said, I highly recommend that if you don't feel comfortable with EQ, you actually skip this video for now and learn EQ a little bit better. I'll link to a video up here where I just do a broad overview of EQ where you can really start to learn EQ better. And if you don't already have it, be sure to grab my six step checklist to a pro mix because it has a built-in EQ cheat sheet in it that's really gonna help you out. Now, what are vintage EQs and why do we use them? Well, as I said at the beginning, they add a little bit of uh, analog distortion that's just really cool. And they have these quirks about them, limitations, if you will, that make them a little bit different to mix with than the infinite nature that you have when you pull up just the stock channel EQ and logic. But a well-set stock channel EQ is gonna often sound better than a poorly set analog style EQ, so again, Learn EQ first, and then dive into these. Let's go and jump into them. This isn't gonna be a super comprehensive look at these because this is Five Minute Logic Expert, but I wanna give you a broad overview of what all you have here and how you might use them in a real mixing situation. Starting with the tube style EQ. This is the vintage tube EQ, and this is emulating a Pultec style EQ, which is characteristically warm and smooth. So it's really good for adding low end and kind of upper end smooth emphasis, uh, bringing those out a little bit more in the mix. and they're a little bit quirky in how they're set up because in the low end you can actually boost and cut at the same exact frequency so you have this is a boost this is how much you're boosting this would be how much you're cutting so here i'm not actually cutting at all and then at the, the frequency that you select so here it's at 60 hertz so on an eq this would be like a boost and then you could also cut at that same frequency. Now, why would you boost and cut at the same frequency? Well, they're not technically exactly the same frequency based on the way the EQ curves do their curves. Uh, and you can get this kind of cool low end boost that actually cleans up right above it in a neat way. That's not the example, that's not how we're using it here, but it can be really cool on bass guitar. That's the pull tech trick if you've ever heard of that. So that's this section here. Then we have our high boost and your high frequency that you select. So again, that would be like doing a boost here up in the higher frequencies. This can go from one kilohertz all the way up to 16 kilohertz, which is basically from here all the way up to here. So you can get pretty high with that. And then the boost is just how much of that that you're boosting. And then you also get a high frequency attenuation, which is a cut in that same frequency range from five kilohertz up to 20 kilohertz, which is something like here up to here, but we're boosting. So something like that. Now, the way we're using it here is just to add a little bit more upper mid range presence to these drums at around 6,000 Hertz and a little bit more uh, just low end emphasis at around 60 Hertz. The last thing that's really important with all these vintage EQs is this drive knob. This drive knob is how much of that analog saturation you're giving it. And you can really exaggerate this and really blow things out, get them pretty distorted. We'll look at an example of that in just a minute. Here, I'm just adding a little bit of grit with just the default position that this comes in. And I'm using the output model that is the 2 EQ because that's the kind of emulation I'm trying to do here. You can actually select any of these other ones which could create some interesting sounds, but I, that starts to be a paralysis of choice for me. So I usually just stick with the default here. And then I typically don't actually set anything down here. This is just a few more options in the mid range, but I'm typically focused just up here on this EQ range. Okay, so let's listen to what this is doing on the drums. Let's start with it in, and then I'm gonna take it out and just hear how the low end gets a little bit smaller and kind of the air in the upper mid range disappears a little bit. Check it out. Turn it off, add it back on. Now we might be adding a little bit of volume there too, but you get a sense of what it's doing. It's opening up the upper end. It's giving a little bit more girth down in the bottom end. And it's just a little bit different than you get with the channel EQ. Okay, let's listen to what we can do on bass guitar using this graph graphic EQ. So this is kind of an API style graphic EQ. And the power of this is really its limitations. You can't do a lot with it because it's really specific to preset frequencies. Now you can tune these frequencies if there's a range or a specific frequencies that you wanna target with this. But generally speaking, you're gonna be fixed to 
these specific frequencies. And while it's a limitation, it's also kind of cool. Okay, so with this, we have the drive knob over here as well. And APIs are typically a little bit punchier. They're a little bit grittier. They can be really cool on drums. I'll often use them on drums. Here, I'm going to use it to kind of add a little bit more low into the bass and then also uh, drive it pretty hard to get a little bit different of a tone out of the bass. So let's go and listen to this bass here. We're just going to drag, drive this up a little bit in the low end. And I'm going to drive it hard with this distortion. So without that, and then we'll drive it up. And then use the output volume here to balance it back out so I'm not adding too much volume. Let's listen to that in the context of the mix here. Off. On. And in solo, this is on. And this is off. I mean, pretty different, right? We're getting a little bit extra grit out of it, and we could bring out more presence by boosting up here, but I kind of like what it's doing as is. So that's an example of the graphic EQ. It's a little bit different of an EQ, but it has a really good tone. Now, speaking of really good tone, one of the biggest ways that I use this is a tip I picked up from Mark Daniel Yel Nelson, which is actually on my stereo output. He does this with actual hardware analog API EQs, uh, and he runs his mix through them, but he doesn't actually do any EQing with them. He's just using it for the saturation that it brings in. So I put these on my stereo output, my mix bus, my master track, whatever you want to call it, and just do a little bit of distortion, just kind of the stock here. And you'd be amazed. It just kind of opens up the, the upper mid range is what I noticed and gives it kind of a cool character. I'm sure this is not exactly like Mark Daniel Nelson's actual analog units, but it gives it something that I like, which ultimately is all that matters. So check this out. I'll have it on and then I'll flip it off. So it's cool, it just gives it a little bit more bite up in that upper mid-range without being an obvious form of distortion or saturation. So I really like that. I use that on most every mix that I do. Uh, I at least try it out and see if it, if it adds to the mix. Okay, let's look at the final version, which is the console EQ. And this is the uh, Neve style EQ. And this is probably the one I reach for the least, but it sounds great and definitely does the Neve style thing pretty well. So here we have a low cut that we can engage, which is kind of like a, a high pass filter. It is a high pass filter. And so you can cut out low frequencies. We have a low shelf and we can set the frequency for that and boost or cut at that frequency. We have a mid range boost that we can set the frequency for and we can boost or cut at that specific frequency. And this goes from 360 Hertz all the way up to 7200 Hertz. So it's a pretty broad range, really anything in the mid range all the way up to the, the upper mid range. And we also have a high shelf that's at a fixed frequency. And I don't know the exact fixed frequency. There's a few different uh, frequencies that Neves have been depending on the model, but really it's just to boost it and determine if you like it or don't like it kind of thing if you want it. Okay, so let's listen to that on some vocals here. I've been down, but I've never been down cut like a little this bit of the low mids. Something and another know is something I miss. Make it a little bit thinner. Something that I miss. I'm gonna boost maybe around 3K. I'll boost I've here and find. I've been down, but I've never been down like this. Laid out a home, thinking about that. Right around 3.2 is pretty good, so we'll minimize that a little I've bit. I've been down, but I've never been down like and this. Let's try the shelf. Something and another know is something I miss. That's pretty cool. And then let's try driving a little bit and see if we get a little distortion. I've been down, but I've never been down like this. And I made something and another know is something I miss. So off. Something that I miss. Add it back on. I've been down, but I've never been down like this. Laid out at home, thinking about that kiss. Thinking about that kiss. Pretty cool, right? It definitely can get you a little bit more drive on the vocals, can tone shape it very easily, very quickly. Uh, and yeah, it's just a different flavor in your mix. Now, again, if you don't really understand EQ, definitely grab my six step checklist to a pro mix. Or if you're just struggling to get a mix that you're proud of, this six step checklist just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them inside Logic. And it has a built in EQ cheat sheet with it that gives you some guide in terms of frequencies for the different sounds that you might be wanting to boost or cut in your mix. It's completely free from the link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Have you been using these vintage style EQs in your mixes? Do you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with another five.
5-Minute Logic Expert. 